All right, guys, Michael Hicks here with Mike Does and the Build Unique podcast here with my special guest, Levi Kelly, today. Before we get started, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Wander Chat. All right, I'd like to thank our sponsor of this week's video, Wander Chat Vacation Rentals here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. For all your unique vacation rental needs, we have water properties, we have mountain properties, we have shipping containers, A-frames, lake houses. We've got you covered on your unique spaces. So come on down and see us. Visit us at wanderchat.com or on TikTok and Instagram at wanderchat. All right, Levi, thank you so much for coming down. I know you stayed at the River House last night. Yes. I appreciate you coming over after you finished. Tell us about Levi and, and how you, you know, kind of how you got here. Yeah. First off, thanks for having me on the podcast. This is really cool. Yeah, you build awesome. you build some really cool spots in this area. But how I got started, so what I do is I feature cool Airbnbs on my YouTube channel and you know, just show them to the world, see what people like to watch them, get inspired by them if they want to stay at them. I got started uh about 2019, I think is when it was. I just knew people were making money on YouTube. I wanted to try making YouTube videos. I have a pretty solid video background. I just wanted to make my own money on YouTube. So random videos about eight months into it. Uh, I posted a couple tiny house tours just in my area of Ohio because I just found them pretty interesting. Other videos are really random. But then I posted a, a shipping container video. That video is the one that blew up and started my channel. And how that happened was Jaden Smith, Will Smith's son, just randomly tweeted out the video. It had like maybe 600 views or something at the time. Oh man, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No, I knew that was the video that blew up, but yeah. I didn't know that that's what happened. Yeah. Well, that was my last video. I thought, man, I'm spending a lot of time on YouTube. I took like a two week break right after that. And during that two week break is whenever he just randomly tweeted out the link. No text, no nothing. And it had, I had about 800 subscribers at the time. And that shot me up to like, 25,000 subscribers wow. and it got now it has like 5 million views or something. So it's just continued to grow from there. And I thought, well, this is my ticket. Praise the Lord. We're going to, and then after that, I've only posted Airbnb content. So is that before that, what was, was that your, do you have a different focus or was it just all over the board or? It was just all over the board. I was trying to do anything that would click and work. Okay. And I had a couple of videos get, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 views. But nothing ever like stuck. Right. So the the short term mental content uh, and following that path, how have you uh, grown the business since then? Is it kind of been organic? And is it is it hosts reaching out to you, or you you reaching out to hosts, mm -hmm. or you know how, how have you grown to where you are now? Yeah, it's been very organic. In the beginning, right after that happened, I was like, well, now I got to get more Airbnb videos. What do I do? So I just spent my own money and booked them, and then. My next major trip, which is like maybe a month after that, I went to New York and I stayed at like four or five spots. And I thought, if these videos pay for themselves, then I will 100% continue doing this. And when I uploaded those videos, they got a couple hundred thousand views each. I'm like, this is it. So ever since then, uh, you know, hosts have been reaching out to me a lot of in the beginning. It was a lot more of me reaching out to them saying, hey, I'll put you on my channel if I just get one night for free. And a lot of the times people would say no for whatever reason, but a lot of times they would say yes. Now they're more reluctant to say yes, just because I have a bigger following. Sure. And I get a lot more requests now, so I have to turn down a lot of people just because, you know, now it's really challenging to figure out what people want to see on my channel or what will get uh, views and, you know, be beneficial for me and the host. So that's a couple nuggets there that you mentioned. You talked about uh, in, in, at the beginning you had to pay uh, to go and stay at places. So, you know, I think that's important when we're starting businesses that, you know, sometimes you got to pay to play and, and you've got to invest in yourself and your business to, to, to see that growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and you weren't afraid to do that on the front end. And the other is, uh, you know, you're not a fit. Not everybody is a fit for you and your brand, and, Yeah, you know, holding true to your brand, uh, rather than just, okay, here's somebody that will let me stay for free just so they can advertise. Yeah. Well, if, if their property doesn't meet, you know, Levi Kelly's brand, then it's not going to be beneficial to you or them because yeah. the audience that's seeing that is not going to stay there. Yeah. You know, because it's not what they're, they're they're watching you for. Exactly. And, you know, and then you're not going to pull the views that you need. And, and, uh, you know, so I think that's two great points there that, that, uh, that will help you continue to grow. And uh, because, you know, you've built a brand that, that goes along with, 
with your persona and and the videos that you that you post yeah uh, so holding true to that long term you know and i know i reached out to you about a property not too long ago it was a very unique property but it was still not you know it didn't fit the tiny home or the unique the unique space that fit your brand so uh you know that's just part of it yeah i recently had a guy offer me me and my wife to fly out pay me like three or four grand to shoot the video and i told him no just because i couldn't risk it not being tied in with my brand and stuff on youtube so it's quite sad when that happens but <laughs> yeah i'm sure and i'm sure it disappoints them as well because <laughs> yeah. it's like probably a gut punch to the, the person that's saying hey would you you know i'd love for you love to have you out here yeah but, i'm sure it is you know but yeah it's, it's important to hold true so as you as you've grown and as you've uh, ventured out and stayed what what would be your your coolest stay yet my coolest day, that's a pretty good question. It has to be the cliffs in Hawking Hills, Ohio. So a lot of people throw shade on Ohio just because who wants to go there? But Hawking Hills area is a state park in Ohio, and it gets just as many tourists as Yellowstone National Park every single year. So it's a really big hot spot. And they had they converted this old Boy Scout camp into a big lodge. It sleeps like 20 guests. But the unique thing on their property is they have a, a natural waterfall in the back. So they built a deck that walks down to it. But it's not just the waterfall, which is really cool itself. They built a swimming hole at the bottom and a pump that continuously pumps the water uh, all summer. So you get a nice blue waterfall and it's heated. So the water is not as hot as a hot tub, but it's heated. So you got a heated waterfall in the property and that one has to definitely be the coolest so i've seen that property and uh, on your video and then i'm friends with uh sarah the the uh oh yes for that property as well yeah uh so that, they've done a, a phenomenal job marketing the property and and uh just getting it out there oh you know, yeah so i've always kind of wondered this hawking hills did it I, i'm sure it's seen a lot of growth yeah and i i would almost be willing to bet that some of that growth is due to your video uh, and I, it's, has the growth come more in the last few years since that video? Uh, I've always been that way. I would say in the last, you know, four years, I've definitely, since I've been in the game with it, everybody's trying to get a spot in Hawking Hills now. There's endless. There, I live about an hour and a half away, and the banks there are getting loans for properties out in Hawking Hills. So everywhere is trying, everybody's trying to get out there. And it's really a cheap spot too. There's not a lot of development. Uh, there's no like hotels or anything like that there. So a lot of people are developing out there. Good, good. I guess a low barrier to entry as far as uh, yeah, probably uh, no regulations, zoning and regulations, and zero. Uh, so that, that, that helps when you're building a unique property like a shipping container, or yeah, a, a treehouse because uh, you know uh, restrictions can get in the way of that real quick. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've heard stories of. No inspections either. You know, that's, <laughs> I, I guess I'm kind of neutral on that. I, I don't like overreach, but I, I'd hate to also hate, you know, somebody coming in and saying something stupid. Yeah. But, you know, it's like uh, where I do have a problem with that is the people that don't want to do it right to begin with. And they come in because they don't have inspections, they cut corners and then you end up with uh, a safe structure. And that's where. That would get so, messy. Yeah. And I, I need a happy medium. You know, yeah. I, want, I want inspections and I want codes enforcement, but I don't want overreach. You know? Yeah. And so um, we talked about another area down in Georgia you're getting ready to visit. And uh, we just finished building down there. And it was insane. The the inspectors. Really? Over and above uh, what's required by the National Building Code. Really? Yeah, it's just, oh, uh, man. It's like uh, they have their own little... Uh, well, that's a popular tourist spot, Delagana. Yeah, Delagana. Yeah. yeah, so uh, it, it is a cool space, and uh, but they they took they they beat to their own drum, and uh, I guess you know they're the ones that uh, have to sign off. So you, you play the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not too bad. Uh, so when you're staying, I know you 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 pull up to property. Do you do you pull up to properties? I know I know you did one where it was a uh, a mansion or listed as a mansion and it ended up not being what you thought it was going to be. Yeah, does that happen a lot? I mean, is, is it you know maybe item not as described or or you're seeing something that you know I know you're getting the highlights when people send them to you. Yeah, uh, but do you pull up and you're like, oh man, this is not going to shoot well, or or this is not you know. Yeah, this yeah. It's not what our viewers want to see. 
That definitely does happen. Yeah. The one you're talking about was the worst example. And that was luckily one of my first ever videos. And yeah, advertise as a mansion. You pull up though, there's like the grass is up to my knees. The boards, there's like wood paneling on the back of the house. It's like falling off. Paint scuffs everywhere. It literally was a party house and it looked like somebody just partied there that night. And so the night before. Yeah. <laughs> and I paid for that place. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to you know, hate on it kind of on this video for fun, <laughs> just see what happens. But ever since then, uh, no, no, no experience that bad. Sometimes, yeah, you pull up on the property and, you know, I only see a couple photos sometimes and I'm like, wow, there's actually a lot. This might be a little tough to, uh, uh, talk about, but a lot of it is like with the small details that you don't see on camera that can kind of get passed by, but no, overall, all the spots I've been to, I would suggest for people to go stay at. It's just, you know, some are better than others. And my experience with them definitely refl can reflect that. Like I stayed at one, um, this, uh, up in, uh, Northern Minnesota a couple of weeks ago, the toilet was outside and it was just a hole in the ground and the shower, what they did, they didn't have any running water either. So what you had to do, they collect rainwater on the property and you would, take the sh this bucket with like a spigot and you would hang it up in the shower and you just fill the bucket up with water and have that fall on you. But that place was one of my favorite this year I've stayed. So it's truly just about the experience you have at the properties. Yeah, I think if you have good expectations going in and you know that, okay, there's no running water, you know, you have an outhouse or a privy yeah. and you know, you're going to be taking a shower with rainwater <laughs> that's, that's collected and you're wanting to experience that, you know, so be it. Yeah. You know, uh, it's the I think, you know, you get upset guests when they don't read the description. They book a place <laughs> yeah. and then they get somewhere and they're like, I can't believe this place doesn't even have running water. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, a, but, you know, talking about running water and, and amenities, what what are the, the must have amenities and, and uh, the, the everything, the essentials that you need when you. you yes. Know, you must have amenity. I think location is key. What kind of view do you got? Are you located in the woods, privates? Are you on the river, which is beautiful? And are you maximizing that river by building the deck out and having guests enjoy that? That is my most important thing. I've I've never stayed in one that's like in the city or anything like that unless I needed to. I'm always wanting to get away, enjoy the beautiful nature because, you know, who knows 50 years from now what how much nature oh, is going to be much, gone. Yeah. Exactly. So, and it's always a great reset. I like to, you know, like that spot I was just talking about. That was um, a good, it was just so good because I had to snap out of my daily routine for with everything I was doing there. And it was just a nice, and there was no Wi-Fi. And when I was there, the cell phone tower got uh, hit by a car or something. And the entire service for like three hour radius was gone. <laughs> so I was just no service, no Wi-Fi, nothing. And I just enjoyed that. So, good, yeah. But the amenities I definitely enjoy where they're located. I would say that's important. Okay. And the bed. You know, that's, you talk about resetting every now and then. You know, you get so so wrapped up in, in, uh, you, in your case, creating content and, and grinding daily. And, you know, it's important to get away and have that reset every now and then. So I'm heading out on the Appalachian Trail next week for six to ten days, depending on how my body does. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's going to be a reset for me. It's just, yeah. You know, I just want to get out there and just be me and nature and, and a few friends. And uh, so you got and, you got to pack your food and stuff, too, for yeah, all six days. Packing food, toiletries, everything, you know, everything. So, yeah. Wow. That'd be so yeah, fun. You talk about showering with a rain bucket. I mean, I don't even get a shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no shower for 10 days. Well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop at a couple of hostels along the way. I think they're at mile 30, mile 60. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm hoping every two to four days I'll end up with a shower. Yeah. Uh, so, and some and some clean clothes, you know. It's Have you ever can't hiked that long, camped that long? No, the, the most I've done is 20 and two nights. Uh, 20 miles and two nights. Man. It's, it's 85 and 8 to 10. Yeah. So if I, I don't know that I can maintain a 10 mile a day average, you know, that's the, the goal, but oh yeah, I just, I know I can do it a couple of days, but I don't know that I can do it every day. Man, so I, we'll I would love to do goes. that. That'd be fun. I'm going again in the spring. Just go ahead and mark it off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do it every <laughs> year. I'm going to spring and fall until I'm done. Up into Maine's where it goes, yeah. right? Yeah. Maine. Man. So we'll see. Um, I, may, it may, I might hate it. We'll see. see how <laughs> yeah, I never go again. But, uh, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, you might have some good backpacking gear for cheap. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, so what makes a good host? What makes a good host? I think what makes a good host is 
do they have the right people in place for their Airbnb? Like if they have one Airbnb, I think they can do it all. So if they're doing a good job at cleaning, at responding to the guests, then that's great. But sometimes a lot of people have multiple spots and they have a team of cleaners, a team of social media people, a team of whatever it may be. So if they have good cleaners, good people online, then, uh, then the guest I think will definitely enjoy that. Cleaners are the most important to me. Sometimes I come to a place and it looks like the place wasn't cleaned that well. And I'm like, man, it's not on the host. It's on the cleaners that they hired. So. Well, which is on the host. Yeah. Yeah. I guess in the line of things. Yeah, it is on the host too. So if that, you know, as we've grown, we've had to, you know, we're still trying to do the social media thing, but you know, there's going to come a point where we just need to turn that over, but it's like, yeah. uh, you know, we've got a cleaner and we've got a turnover specialist that, that checks behind the cleaner, but things still get missed. I mean, and then there's, you know, the biggest thing for us is, you know, we're at five properties now and mm-hmm. it's like, you know, we're, we're checking on the day to day and making sure things are happening or we have the turnover specialist checking on those things. Mm-hmm. And then we end up uh, going to a property, but well, just like yesterday, we pull up to the river house. And the first thing I see when I walk up, I was like, man, there's spider webs and gnats up there that weren't there three <laughs> days ago. It's like, yeah, that's tough. Uh, so, you know, then you're like, man, I wish the turnover specialist had said something where, you know, I can get a ladder and go over there and take care of it. Yeah. Um, or send somebody to take care of it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a constant communication and cleaning is, is key. Uh, and it's hard to stay on top of it. I mean, yes. It's constant. If, if they're not noticing those things and you're not finding out about it and you don't know to take care of it, then you end up with a negative review because somebody yeah. pulls up and sees something, you know, it's like, yeah. I just had recently, you know, I had, it was like a 4 p.m. check-in, which is kind of late to begin with. It was like 3.40. And then I got a message saying that the cleaners are still cleaning. I'm going to have to check in an hour late. I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Like if I was just, I don't really care. But if it was just like a normal guest, that would have been, I imagine, really upsetting. Also, I've had a time where uh, communication is key as well with the guests. Whenever I was staying at this place for a night, uh, they normally send like the check in the day of or whatever the day before. Well, I was messaging the, messaging the guy I was driving to his place because I knew the city he was living in. Uh, I never got a response or anything that whole day. I couldn't check in. I didn't know where he was. He didn't message me till the next morning saying I had to go stay somewhere else that night. Mm. So he didn't message me till the next morning. He's like, oh, sorry, you should have messaged me an, uh, a little bit earlier. I didn't have my phone. And that was it. And I didn't I didn't message him back. So that was horrible communication. That was the worst. So, like, I, for me, like, man, I'm like, this is Levi Kelly. I, I don't want to bug him, you know. I don't want to. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, we're not, you know, we're not booking on platform. So it's just yeah. back and forth. So it's like, okay, you know, and then, you know, you're like, hey, can you send me the address or the checking instructions? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, here's the address, you know. So then, you know, it's like, okay, copy and paste uh, and then text and send. You know, so. But yeah, I guess we have a relationship now at this point and to where we can text casually and, yeah. uh, you know, but, but yeah, I think communication between the guests and the host and then, you know, the host to me, even after that experience, when the guest leaves feedback and uh, especially if that feedback's negative, how the host is replying to it online, you know, that says <laughs> a lot about the host because I've seen some hosts go off the deep end on really? the feedback and it's just insane the things that they say. Oh, do they blame like the guests and getting like oh, a little yeah, fight? Yeah, it's like, you know, another entitled Karen. <laughs> you know. Why would you put that on the public Airbnb? I know, it's like that just makes you look worse than they already did. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you kill them with kindness and uh, do it that oh, way. Wow. But, yeah, it's there's some crazy things, especially on these Airbnb forms. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I would yeah. love to see those. Yeah, you can go on some of those pages and start just Man. messing around with it. Why do people think that's nuts? Yeah, I don't know. So so what's next? With me? Yeah. What's what's the the big the big plan? Big plan. I have a my own Airbnb hopefully going up here soon. I bought a tiny house on wheels and I'm just converting. I made it permanent, though. I took the wheels off. Okay. And uh, I'm renovating it. And hopefully it'll be up on Airbnb. We bought, I have six acres of property with a pond. Uh, the renovation wasn't the original plan. I was going to build my own little tiny house structure and try to think of something really unique. But you know, I don't have an experience in any of this. My only experience is really with the camera. So, and I'm doing it all myself, me and my dad, really. So. Uh, you renovated your house, didn't you? Yes, I did renovate my house with a, some help. But um, uh, so. 
when we bought the property last year, uh, and we then a tiny house came up for sale just right down the road. And that wasn't my thing. I didn't want a tiny house on wheels. But we went and looked at it. It was really cheap. Yeah, I bought it for like 30 grand or something. Oh, yeah. Hard to big to Yeah. And it was move-in ready. It was all done. But I just didn't like it. I wanted it to be really nice for photos, for people and guests. So we gutted it. And now we're just renovating it right now. It should be done, man, hopefully by Thanksgiving or sometime sooner. So it's moving ready, but you got it. And, and it. <laughs> yeah, I literally <laughs> well, went backwards. You know, but it, it, again, you know, you go, it goes back to building a brand. You know, you're starting a tiny home community or some tiny homes around that pond, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, it's got to meet a certain standard. Exactly. And and that's what it was. Starting that way, you're starting off on the wrong foot. So, yeah. You know, that's, I see some, you know, I've seen some guys take these sheds and just turn them into a tiny house and, you know, from the aesthetic from the outside and everything about it is just wrong all the way. Yeah. It's like, man, you just shot yourself in the foot from day one. You know? <laughs> uh, so yeah, going back and, and so what, what kind of changes did you make? Oh man. Well, first off, we had to get it brought in there. We put it on the foundation, uh, about then we built a uh, deck, our first part of the deck around it. Literally two days later, a tornado happened in Southern Ohio, which in my entire time living there, I've never seen one. A tornado was about three miles away and just blew it off its foundation and just crushed our deck. So that was horrible. And I didn't even know what happened when I arrived on property. I was like, oh my Lord. And there was like 10 or 12 trees falling on the property. It was big ones. We had to get the Amish to come cut them up and take them. But, uh, but uh, <laughs> we had to get the Amish to come cut up and uh, take them for us. But that was a setback. So we had to get the get it back on the foundation. We gutted everything, the ladder, the loft. Well, the loft's still there. The flooring, we kept the kitchen cabinets. That's the only original thing. We relocated the toilet in the tiny bathroom. Uh, that was a hassle. We added two windows, one in the bathroom, one in the living room. And um, we took out the washer and dryer. Uh, just because it took up way too much space in that tiny, tiny spot. So a lot of kind of big things to yeah. do. And it, it's not just, you know, replacing the flooring and repainting. Well, you see, you know, you have your main structure, you have your trailer. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of the expensive stuff. But, yeah. Uh, you know, when you're, that's that's one thing I like about these small spaces is that you can put a, a luxury item in there, but because it's smaller, you know, you're not spending a fortune. <laughs> yeah, true. It. So that's, that's been really, really cool with that. So a tiny home community around the pond, is that what you have um, two, two or three, five, six? What you probably. Doing? I really like the privacy aspect. So probably just one more. If this one works out really well, then we'll just do one more on the other side of the property. Okay. And paddle boat in between. Uh, yeah, we'll do a paddle. We'll do something in the pond. Something in the pond. Yeah. Okay. No paddle boards, right? No paddle boards. It's too small for that. <laughs> and I'm not good at that. <laughs> but yeah, maybe a canoe or something cool for photos. And yeah, we'll have a dock at the pond. And yeah. Yeah. Well water. So no one worry about that. We had to replace the well pump. Uh, that was a challenge. Yeah. I like to call myself in this uh, whole process, uh, learning how to become a professional homeowner. <laughs> yeah, man, there's such, but there's no better way to learn than just get in there. And do yes. It. You know, we had to replace the well at the river before we, uh, before we opened up and it was like, really? Well, we did, we did this filtration system. And then once we got the filtration system in, the guy's like, your well's not working adequately enough, so you had to put a pump in. So then we're pulling up the pipe. Well, your pipe's this and that type of pipe. You need to go ahead and put a, a different type of pipe in. You got to so put a different type of pipe in. put a new pipe, a new pump, a new wow. filter. Every, everything there is new except the hole that the well is in. <laughs> so, how deep is it? It was only like 75 feet. You know, oh, that's you know. that's how deep mine is. I was curious about being all right on the river, how deep the wells are. Yeah, uh, right there, around 75 feet. Now, my dad's got one over here that's closer to 500. Oh, know, my uh, goodness. And, you know, they're having to drill in and case rock and, and this kind of stuff. So, uh, you just, I guess you just never know. There's a spot in Texas where they drilled for, f I think, like 1,500 feet and didn't hit any water. They would have to drill another 1,500 to possibly hit more water, but they just decided to forget that because that's really expensive so yeah. they built a there's like a community of like a thousand people a reservoir there they're digging it out right now and they're just gonna have a reservoir there for their water supply because can't trust the drought in texas yeah. you know i've seen some people talk about fracking for uh for water where they, i guess they drill a certain amount blow or blast and then 
the water will seep in. Like oh, that. okay. So uh, similar to fracking for oil, I guess. But yeah, you know, that's the way I have it in my head. Anyway. Don't know how much that would cost for no, just an yeah. Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, for a short term rental, you drop a piece of dynamite down a hole and uh, see if you get water. Yeah. <laughs> so what 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 drives you to to this lifestyle? What drives you daily to keep going? And yeah. Uh, you know, I know you've got a family now, but before, yeah. before you had, you know, it's easy to say the family drives you, but what, <laughs> yeah. what is the drive behind Levi? Oh man, I love working for myself and just being my own business owner. There's lots of ups and downs to it. The biggest up is just creating my own schedule, working for myself. Um, I really enjoy that a lot because I'm, I'm just so, I feel like just loose, I guess, with the mic, like my scheduling and stuff. So I don't know. I just like that aspect a lot. And then of course my family. Yeah. That's, that's what, you know, for me, it's the freedom and and being able to do what I want when I want with the family and, you know, knowing that, yeah, I work a lot, but whenever I want to take off and, and I haven't missed a ball game, you know, because of work. Uh, So it's, or or, or whatever that performance might be, you know, you you have the time and the freedom to be there with the kids and stuff. Yeah. No, I like that. I, when I worked at a coffee shop, I tried to go take a trip to Colorado. And I requested the days off like three months in advance and they said no. So I quit <laughs> that. Yeah. And I was like, so just experiences like that. If I wanted to pick, I change my mind all the time. I'm always telling my wife, she gets really irked about it, I guess. I'm like, we should move to Texas. And I do a bunch of research about Texas or like, we should buy a van and renovate it like a week later. So I'm always like trying to think of something new, something fresh and, you know, schedule allows me to do that. Well, and, you know, tell her to get used to it because it doesn't go away when you're creative <laughs> like that. I, you know, that's, I went home and told Tia I was going to build a house out of a shipping container and that's kind of how this was born. Yeah. <laughs> so, but with these, these vacation rentals, it gives me the ability to have a new idea all the time and, and not be tied to one thing. Yeah, you know, being so, able to act on it. Yeah. So just and, and having the ability to act at this point in my life. Yeah. You know, so you know, the next one I think she was telling you we're we're doing an A frame uh in Blue Ridge and uh and then a, a Hobbit house and another tree house and and just you know, we're getting ready to build a, a pizza restaurant and uh a small commercial space out of shipping containers. Oh, that's cool. So it'll uh you know, just having fun at this point and being yeah. creative. So, no, that's really cool. I'll be excited to see that. Yeah, you had to stop in next time you're down. It'd be uh, the only pizza container place no, in the world. There's, there's one. There's one? There's oh. one in yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm sure there's more than one, but there's one in Denver called Cart and Driver, and it's two containers. Uh, I don't know. I love all the little bars and restaurants that, that are popping up in containers. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple in Atlanta. There's a donut place in Atlanta, too. Uh, it's a uh, container? Vinci's Donuts in the, it's the Linux Mall parking lot. Wow. Uh, out of a shipping container. So I just. And it's just, it, the sky's the limit, but uh, just getting creative and doing what, what, what have I'm you seen the uh, container community in Waco, Texas? It's like all the co- different colored ones. Yeah, a friend of mine did that. What is that turning into? I was just there and it, it didn't look like it was anything yet. So they're doing it's just vacation rentals. So are, you ta- are you talking about the one on the lake? No, it's like in the town of Waco. Okay, no, I haven't seen There's that. like a hundred containers, but okay. they formed it into like this huge building. I haven't seen that. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that. This uh, friend, uh, Aaron Christensen, she's doing a uh, uh, community out of shipping containers around the lake out in Texas. Oh, okay. So I thought it was it's near Waco, but I'm gonna check that. Uh, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, they're all, they're all identical, and they're just kind of in a row, more like an RV park type. Oh, of, okay. Uh, but they are, you know, nightly rentals. Yeah, uh, so. I'm sure that works out for them. I'm sure. I'm sure she's doing well with it. The <laughs> uh, Texas is a hot spot. Yeah, There's Austin. A lot. I think Austin's really pulling in a lot of uh, you know unique people and unique housing. So, yeah. Uh, uh, now I don't know. You know, now I think the shift was from California to Austin. Now I'm seeing a lot of Texans moving to Chattanooga. <laughs> so I'm like, oh really? Man, don't screw things up, okay? Please. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like Chattanooga's only rising. It is. It's it's doing great. Uh, it's just uh, it's become uh, uh, you know almost not enjoyable to me anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's you, it's great, but I grew up here and being able to drive and not have traffic, and now it's like, uh, man, you sit in traffic everywhere you go, and you know the growth is uh, outpaced the rate in which they can increase wow. the infrastructure. So you know we've got roads that we can't get in and out of town, and uh, the you know going towards Nashville, it's it's, it's insane. I mean, really? you sit for forty five minutes to an hour in the at rush hour trying to get in town or out of town, and 
it's going around the river, so we're kind of cut off to be able to widen. Uh, True. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it on your way out, but yeah, you got two lanes there. There's not really much unless they build up on top and do yeah. a, a double deck. Uh, but something needs Man. to be done because you just can't can't drive here anymore. That's that's my big complaint. I love that, <laughs> but I just can't drive here anymore. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I couldn't do that either. That's why I live in small town. Uh, well, you know, I'm in North Georgia, so we're. We can go to Chattanooga and do what we want, and then come back home and uh, and have the small town. Oh, I didn't know you lived in North Georgia. I thought yeah, you lived in Chattanooga. Yeah, so, yeah, we're here. Uh, this is this is my hometown, Ross Vegas, <laughs> in Rossville. Yeah, so we're we're right across the line. I mean, the the line's about two hundred feet from here. Uh, so we're so you have to pay taxes to both states. No, just uh, well, with your businesses, uh, Chattanooga or city, uh, get it. Um, state of Tennessee doesn't have an income tax. Oh, so uh, Georgia does, but yeah, we will pay Georgia income tax on our Tennessee income. <laughs> oh man, that's kind of <laughs> you know, well, that, yeah, my, when I used to work in Tennessee. Uh, you know, I worked over there where they didn't have any income tax, but because I lived in Georgia, I still had to pay income tax on, on the income from over there. And I had friends that lived in Alabama and paid Alabama income tax, worked in Georgia, oh. paid, paid both of them. So you know, it's like plus federal. Yeah, so they're really getting hit. Yeah, really. Uh, Going back to the short-term rental side and the content creation. So are, are you an influencer, a content creator? What 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 is that? Yeah, um, whatever somebody else would call me. A lot of times it's influencer, but I like to think of it as content creation. Okay. I talked to Mike and he said he hated the, he hated the term influencer. <laughs> he, he's a content creator. Well, that's what you felt strongly about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's whatever you just want to call me. Whatever you think I am is really what it is. Okay. I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'm influencing people. Uh, yeah, you definitely are. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you are. I mean, you, you know, uh, you're influencing people to make a decision on where they want to stay. That is true. You're influencing that is others true. to build unique spots. I mean, it's definitely been influential to me and uh, and an inspiration to be able to see what others are doing. So oh, I can do that and, and in my own way. You know, yeah. taking taking what somebody else has did and done and make it mine. Yeah. Uh, but if, if you were starting out or, if, you know, an aspiring influencer, uh, content creator, what, what advice would you have for that person that's just starting out? Yeah. Uh, this is one of my most popular questions is always, man, how do I get to stay at these Airbnbs and cabins? Like, how do you do it? Well, the sad news is, you know, if you don't have a following, you just got to, Book the places yourself because you're not going to be able to stay there, you know, for free or for a discount or whatever. So I'm like, this is what I did. I smelling like first three months. I burned a lot of money staying at these places for one night, you know, 300 bucks a night. But you get the content and then it just slowly builds. And then once you're able to leverage yourself to be able to do it for free or make a deal, however you want to do it. And that's when you can. So, you know, you just got to do it. You just got to get in there and do it. There's no easy way. And you just got to be consistent as well. You know, one consistency is important. Yeah. One cabin's not going to do it for you or one whatever post, whatever you're trying to do, you know, a year. If you've been doing it for a year, then people think you're legit. If you've been doing it for that long and that, that'd be my advice. Awesome. It's not as easy as what it looks like on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, is that, I know you said you, you know, you worked in video and you kind of thought, okay, I want to make this work. But I mean, at what point, I mean, growing up, yeah, you know, this YouTube and social media for me is all a later in life thing. I mean, yeah. You know, I guess YouTube has been around for a long enough now, but at what point did you realize, hey, I can make a living doing that? I've always watched YouTube my whole life. I knew people made money from it and it looked really fun. And I have, you know, if I can do something fun for myself and make money, then I wanted to try it out. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that we think about for our kids is, you know, the opportunities that they have are so much different than the opportunities that I had growing up because of the digital age we're in and the ability to market yourself online and reach so many more people, you know, creating a course and selling it online. Yeah. A hundred dollars a piece to, you know, 15, 20,000 people. You, you, you can make a good living doing that. Yeah. You know, or, or creating that content for a brand or, or whatever. I mean, you know, five years ago, I would have said, you're crazy. You know, <laughs> and now I'm like, man, Who's the crazy one? It's me. I'm, I, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at this and not looking at it with with open, yes, with open mind. Yeah, and I like it because you know, no matter if how much is how valuable is my time, am I willing to sell my one hour a day for like twenty bucks or on YouTube? It's the there's no limit. If I do one hour of work 
and the video does really well, that's a lot of money. Or well, it, it stays out there forever. Exactly. Yeah, so it's going to continue to produce. I mean, yeah. it, I'm sure it dwindles as time goes, but people are still watching those. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. For years to come. And there's just no cap, which is what I like, too. Yeah. It's limitless, whatever you want to make it. It was never about the money. I just wanted to do the YouTube stuff. And even now, it's still not about the money. There's definitely a lot of things I could do to spend more of my time to leverage myself that I just don't do because I just don't want to do it. And that's another important aspect. You know, if I wanted to start my own podcast just to make money, then I wouldn't want to do that. It's got to be something I want to do to even consider it. But no, right now I'm blessed to be able to provide for my family doing what I do. And uh, Savannah is able to stay home and watch Weston. Everybody, or m most people tend to relate se success to wealth and to money. And success is different for everybody, mm -hmm. you know? And if, if money's not the factor for you, you know, and, and so you talk about making a podcast, make, I don't, expect to ever see a dime out of this podcast yeah and you know to me and I, I continue to say this the reason i'm doing youtube the reason i'm doing the tiktoks the reason i'm doing this is for my kids mm. because and, and my grandkids gary v said you know uh on one of his books i think it was crushing it he was talking about he believes that we'll have technology that will basically have a camera on us 24 hours a day that we can record everything we do and say <laughs> and you know i don't know that that's where we're going yeah i don't know that i want to be there but he said can you imagine being able to see what your great grandfather was doing as a kid that would be playing, nuts. you know so i'm like man so the more of this that i can document and and just talk you know that my kids yeah they might never want to see it yeah but the more that i can talk about and document my great grandkids and great great grandkids that I'm, you know, I'll yeah. never see can see what I was doing. Yeah. And that that's it for me. That would be awesome. I don't even know what my great grandparents look like. So if yeah, I could I watch videos either. of I mean, them, that would yeah. be awesome. I mean, the things that are going through their mind while they're play, I, while they play kick the can or anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, you know, uh, just it could literally be anything. Anything. Anything that, you know, it, it takes you, you know, because who knows what it'll be like 150 years, 150 yeah. years from now. And then being able to see what it was like in the good old days to them, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, when things were simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so comparing it to now. When things were simple. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that's what they're going to be saying. Probably. I mean, look at uh, the advancement just never stops. That's, so that, that's, that's why I do it. It's yeah. not about the money. It's, it's just about documenting to where the future generations can see what we're yeah. doing. You know? I'm a big proponent on the simple life as well. That's yeah. what needs to be i have that's why i have my i have another channel just called levi and sav where i just kind of vlog just what we do with our son weston he's a big part of it and you know savannah watches those videos all the time on the couch and she never rewatches my airbnb <laughs> videos so because well, she's wanting to see y'all exactly and see, and see weston and and just you know re relive those memories yeah so being able to do that you know continually Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, those those videos will become more and more priceless. Just, yeah, but twenty years from now, those videos will be golden. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, especially when it's time for him to graduate, and uh, you get to play him at the graduation video. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, the embarrassing uh, footage. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Be that dad. Uh, so, uh, tips tips for hosts to to stand out and be successful. Uh, you know, when they're setting up their short term rentals, things that that some might miss. Yes. Uh, I would say, you know, it's definitely, you want to have a spot that stands out since there's so much on the market right now. Uh, sometimes I get hosts saying, hey, it would be super beneficial if we could get a video from you and because we're struggling with bookings and, you know, they show me their place and it's just like, you know, not, uh, it's just pretty average. So they're really only hoping people are visiting in that area so they can book their Airbnb because they have to not, I'm more in the market of make a place that people want to come to no matter where you're located. So, and it doesn't have to be all about the money. You can make something really, you can you just a little bit of effort, the right people in place. You can make your spot look really incredible and desirable.
Yeah, I think you know the the, the decor, the amenities, uh, the setting. Yes, you know I, I've seen photos matter. Yeah, photos huge. You know, you know, are you taking pictures with your iPhone or are you are you you know hiring a photographer? Yeah. So you know I've seen tiny homes set up in people's backyards, but they had a water feature and they had a, a putting green and yeah, uh, you know, a private entrance, a private entrance. They got their grill and fire pit area. And it's something that somebody can see, okay, we can visit here and have a good time. We're already yeah. coming here because we're on business or, or travel, you know, for uh, a non uh, luxury need. But yeah. Now, now I can book this unique spot and relax and enjoy myself while I'm here rather than just, yeah, you know, renting a house. And, and that's why I see so many, you know, buying houses in neighborhoods and, um, you know, parts of town that, that maybe aren't as desirable. Yeah. And they're saying, well, I can get double the rent because it's a short term rental. And that may be the case, but yeah, you know, when things slow down, those are the first ones that are going to suffer because they're not, they're, <laughs> there's yeah. no reason for somebody to book that. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. During COVID, a lot of the spots I've seen didn't even slow up at all. Yeah. No, it's, we, we stayed steady. You know, there was a, a two month lull uh, where things, everybody canceled. Mm-hmm. And then it just started right back up. Yeah, uh, and then some. So right, there we go. Yeah. So I, I don't. I I feel like you get uh, the right pieces in place. You know, the, just to have things for your guests to do the the games and the you know the the fire pits. The, yeah. You know, kayaks, paddle boards, whatever, whatever that is, paddle boats. Uh, yeah. Uh, hot tubs and pizza ovens and, and yard games. Yeah. Yeah, if it's a spot where you and your family can stay at the whole time without even having to leave and enjoy their time, then I think that's a pretty good goal. Yeah. Working with creators as a short-term mental host, what, uh, if any, uh, hesitancy do you see? You know, I I see a lot of people online on these forums or in in the the private pages uh, talking about uh, uh, an influencer reached out and and wanted to stay for free and and pay fifteen hundred dollars for the night and, <laughs> and they want this and this and this and uh you know they only have four hundred followers and you know it's like, <laughs> it's like uh yeah sometimes happens know, hosts struggle with that uh and they get upset and I'm like well look you know they're starting their business as well they may, maybe they're not maybe they don't understand yet and you know they're trying to find a happy medium but what what is a what what could you say to hosts and and influencers and creators alike that would bridge the gap and yeah. help everybody work together better? Yeah, no, I would say just what's their proof? You know, if they only have four hundred followers, definitely don't mess with it unless you know I don't know. But if they have other videos or other photos, they can show you other clients where hey, I did the reel for this guy and it got four million views, or like my reels consistently are bringing in or my videos or my photos are consistently bringing in this many eyeballs to it. And then, you know, it just determines, do you, is it worth it to you for their following that they have and that the exposure they can get you? And, you know, if I don't, if they throw out whatever price, it just depends. Is it worth it for you for that, for, you know, a hundred thousand, you know, eyeballs to see the photos and are people sharing the photos or the videos or just stuff like that. So just check out their profile. Check out what they're making. Are they good? Do the photos look good? Do the content look good? And yeah. I think so many people, you know, worried about the views and, and okay, or is this video going to be seen? But, you know, you talk about 100,000. Just because, I guess, you know, everybody says, okay, if I, if I do this, I want to see X number of bookings or you know, yeah. just, just because you don't see those bookings today. Doesn't mean that they're not going to book six to eight months exactly because they saw it there. Yeah. So I think you know you're getting that content out there forever, and you're getting it in somebody's mind. And, yeah. Uh, figuring it out. But. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I can't track the bookings of my own videos, sadly. So I never offer that to the guests I'm re- or host I'm reaching out to because I just don't know. But they'll definitely book a year later. You know, next summer when they want to come check it out. So. All right. Hit me with your best quote. My best quote, well, I'm a Christian, so I'll quote uh, the Bible said, Jesus said, if the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first. And that's always uh, in the back of my mind, because sometimes, you know, when things go bad and people get upset with you or whatever, it's definitely not in the same capacity of what Jesus went through. But, you know, 
if you're a Christian, Jesus is the top guy. So, and people hated him. So if you expect them to hate him, then, you know, life isn't always perfect. So that's, that's a good way to live. You know, if you, if, uh, if you think about the hatred that was given to Jesus, you know, what we're dealing with is very minuscule. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, that humbles that, you real no. quick and you think, man, I, I need to quit wine. Yes. Uh, move on. Yes. No, I always think that because I whine a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> that is a big thing. I need to quit. Oh man, it's easy to do. Easy to do. All right. How do we find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. That's my biggest platform. Um, I just Levi Kelly. My second channel is Levi and Sav. If you're interested in that, Instagram is Levi M. Kelly. My website's Levi M. Kelly as well. My email is Levi at Levi M. Kelly. It's pretty simple. All right. I'm going to get Savannah down here next time. Yes, I know. I've been down. You're, you guys, I've featured the most on my channel. Five spots by you guys. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize that. So you guys are the most popular on my channel. But yeah. uh, uh, yeah, every time I come down here, they haven't come down, sadly. So It's too far of a drive. Yeah, now with our son Weston, his car rides are like his least favorite thing. Uh, and his tiny houses are rough because there's only yeah. like one bed and where would we put him? We went and stayed in a shipping container uh, in uh, North Carolina. And it was a 20-foot container that had a bed. And it was like, uh, we said, hey, you care if we bring our kids? And I, and I didn't want to do it, but like our, our my, my babysitter got sick. Yeah. And we ended up having to take the kids. And so we threw it in our mattress, then we have the clean bed and the kitchen and a bathroom and a container. And I'm like, 20 foot container. Golly, this is tight. You know, it was like tiptoeing around the edge of the mattress. Yeah. Like, like, never again. But yeah, I get that. That's uh, fine. My car rides when my kids were in uh, in uh, car seats and, and young were my favorite because since we hit the road, they were out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then I could pick up that car seat with them in it and take them in and set it in the booth. They never wake up. And it's, it, it was great. Man, uh, less than he doesn't sleep ever. Mm. So. Tough. He's wild. He's walking, running, talking. Oh man, hard to keep up with now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thanks for coming up. Appreciate it. See you guys next week.